God. <laughs> Time caught up with me. Lorna just... Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Time Out. I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake. And Lorna just texted me like two minutes ago to say the Facebook link is bad. I don't know why. I really, I don't know why. So if you're there, I hope you found me on Facebook. It is supposed to be there. And I am live on YouTube. So one of the links <laughs> works. And I don't know. I, I wish I knew. And the cats are going a little crazy. Okay, so hello again. As I said, I'm Becky Goldsmith. And behind me is the Spring Wheels quilt from Once Upon a Season. That's actually the best value to buy to um, get this pattern. But it's also available as a standalone pattern. Both are uh, ebooks or you might be able to get Once Upon a Season as a print-on-demand, but then there's also the standalone digital pattern. But that's what it is, and there's a similar pattern that is for English paper piecing. That's there, too. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about lap apps because they're a wonderful tool, and honestly, as I went through and made the videos for today, I realized they're even more wonderful than I thought and I have them in new pretty fabrics. Okay, so let's just jump right in and let me introduce you to how a lap app works. This is where I normally sit and sew at the end of my sofa. I have a pillow behind my back to support my lower back. Usually, I am leaned back just a little bit and I position my legs on the coffee table. There's also a shorter ledge underneath and sometimes I put my feet there. The lap app is very adjustable. So I can unscrew either one of these to get it to the right height. But honestly, that's about right. And this is how it works. You can rest your forearms or more likely your wrist area and your hand and so what's really nice about this is that not only are my arms resting on this because the weight of my arms are here there's less strain up my uh, upper arm and into my shoulder and into my neck usually i have this light pulled over and on but it kind of blasts out the image on the camera, so I won't leave it on. But the light is really important because without the light, I can't see what I'm doing. If I needed it lower, I could loosen it and lower it. If I needed it higher, I could raise it about like that. So I could make it higher if I wanted to. The lap app works for all kinds of needlework projects. I also sometimes knit. And the lap app supports my hands while I'm knitting. When I'm knitting, the lap app is more supporting my left hand than my right, because my right hand moves a lot. What's nice about using the lap app during knitting is that it really does help to keep my head in the right position. And by the right position, I mean balanced over my body rather than bent forward. I know that when I knit without the lap app, I'll have a tendency to let my hands drop, which means I am tilting my head forward. And I know I do that because sometimes I wake up the next day and my neck is stiff and it's because I'm leaning forward just enough that the weight of my head is affecting the top part of my spine. I hate it when that happens and it's funny for me I don't get that as much when I'm um, doing hand applique and maybe it's because of the years that I've spent training myself to hold my work higher and knitting, uh, there's something about knitting. It, it wants to drop. Um, 
remember, some time back, I talked to you about posture and I talked to you about how much your head weighs. The average human head weighs 12 pounds plus or minus. That's a lot. That's about the weight of a, of a featherweight sewing machine. It's a gallon of milk is eight and about a half pounds. Your head's heavy. So if you let it drop forward, of course it's going to put a lot of strain on the back of your neck and the top of your spine. All right, I don't always sew in the same place, so let me show you another option here. Sometimes I sit in this chair to work because it's very nice. It was my mother's chair and it has excellent back support. My light is on the wrong side for this chair. Because I'm right-handed, if I use this light, it's coming from the right and my hand casts a shadow on my work. So depending on the time of day and the lighting and the project I'm doing, I have to bring in another light and set it up to my left. But the lap app works here too, although I think what you'll find to be true is what I find to be true. And that is each place you sit may require you to adjust the lap app a little bit differently. So here, especially if I put my feet up, that may need to be a little bit higher. It would depend on what I was working on. For hand sewing, this is the right height. For knitting, I would probably need it to be a little bit shorter. Okay, so isn't it handy that it's adjustable with those little knobs? Um, and I do want to go back to the point that your light is important. And so you may have your beautiful lamp or your wonderful things set up in just the right place, but if you change where you sit, you want to have an alternate light source. Okay, Lorna is sending me a question. I don't know what it is, so I'm going to ignore it because I don't know what she's, but she's typing something. Okay, <laughs> we'll see. All right, the next thing, uh, Lorna says the Facebook thing isn't looking right. I don't know why Facebook isn't looking right. It looked like it was going to look right, so I will have to um, look into that for next week. If you're not watching me on Facebook, then you're not hearing this, but if you are watching me on YouTube, YouTube works. I love it when it works. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um, here we go. You can also use your sandboard on top of the lap app. If you've got the larger sandboard, it increases the size of the top. The travel size sandboard is a nice fit on top of the lap app. It's not a perfect fit, but it's a nice fit. Another thing that I like about using my sandboard on top of the lap app is this. If you turn the sandboard upside down, the sandpaper grips the fabric and doesn't move, making this an excellent surface to either write on or put your laptop on. And I do that pretty often. I'll have my lap app and my laptop and I can work here and it puts the keyboard but also the monitor at a very nice height. All right, you caught me looking at my screen because um, <laughs> we're having some technical issues here with getting connected to um, YouTube and Facebook and who knows, maybe everybody's there and Lorna isn't, which is an interesting thing. <laughs> she says maybe that's true. I don't even know. Those of you who are here, I am really grateful because I'm here too. Okay, so the sandboard. The sandboard is a really good tool whether you use it right side up or upside down on top of your um, lap app. And the idea that you can put 
your computer there, your laptop computer, or say an, an iPad that has the little uh, keyboard attached, that's handy because that is yet another thing that we tend to hunch over to deal with if it's really sitting on our lap, that getting it a little bit higher is good. There was something else I was going to remember about that. Let me see if I've got it here. No? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. There's Jim. Okay, here we go. Next up, another place you can use your lap app. How does this work for reading in bed? I think it works really well. This is a really nice height for me to read. And granted, I do have to turn my head down just a little bit but I'm supported all the way up the column of my spine and the back of my head is against the headboard. This is nice. Whoop. So here I am reading my Kindle on the Lap app. How does it work with a regular book for those of you who like a book to read? Oh, it's, it's actually good for a book. I've almost stopped reading regular books on paper because the weight of the book is so hard on my hands, especially at night. But you know what? The Lap App helps a lot with that because the weight of the book is now on the Lap App and I just need my hands to support it and keep it from sliding and to turn the pages. This is very nice. I recommend it. You know, with fabric, you own both sides of the piece of fabric. The same thing is true with the lap app. So I've shown it to you in the more traditional forward uh, position here. But you can actually turn this around. If you turn it around and adjust it in this direction, you can move the lap app closer to your body. So... That's a nice trick, too, because we are all different shapes and sizes. What was it? Oh, I know what else I was going to say. I'm not usually um, in daytime clothes when I'm in bed reading, but aren't you glad I stayed in my daytime clothes for that little demonstration? I thought it was pretty good. Uh, good idea. Okay, so here's another thing I wanted to share with you because we all sit really in different places to... So, and sometimes you go to stitch group. So, here we go. You could easily find yourself at stitch group sewing or with friends somewhere. The Lap app is good for that too. When you're sitting at a table and you want to sit back in your chair and do some sewing while still having all of your stuff here and your friends around and your coffee or your tea, or your glass of wine, and all the other stuff. Yes, the Lap App is a perfect accessory for that kind of sewing. And you might notice how well it works when you're sitting in a chair with your feet down, or with your feet on a footstool, or if you're like me, sometimes you're gonna cross your leg. The Lap App will still fit on your lap, support your work, which allows you to keep your head in the right position Nice posture, good sewing. So yes, it works at a table. Now some of you might be thinking, yes, but I don't need it at a table because I can do this. The problem with sewing here is that in general, a lot of table heights are in such a place that number one, it's flat, it doesn't angle, so the edge of the table bites into your arms. And you will probably have a tendency to bend forward. If you're sitting at the table in the right orientation, and I am not here because I would need to turn this way, I'd need to be talking to the invisible person there, but if I had a light on the table here rather than having it shine at me, if I could turn my body so that the light shone on my work from the left, that would be even better. Okay, so on the one hand, Yes, this is kind of a commercial for the Lap App. On the other hand, what the Lap App does is really important 
for the ergonomics of how you sew and how you craft and how you work on a computer, how you do all of these things. Because if you are continually bent forward, rounding your spine, trying to hold up your head as you're bent forward, it's, it's just not good for your body. Now, what if, what if you don't want a lap app, you want to use something that you've got? Are there things that you've got that could maybe work instead? Yes, there are. Pillows, I've said for years and years and years, you can sew and craft with a pillow in your lap. And I have done that myself. The problem here is that a big part of the year when it's hot, pillows are just too hot on my lap. I don't want to do it. Could you use a different kind of lap desk? Yes, if you can find one that gets to the right height. Could you get, you know those trays that you used to use in bed that have the little folding feet? Well, I didn't use them in bed, but you could use them in bed. The little tray with the feet, that that lifted the work up and then even maybe there with a pillow on it. Yeah, if you've got one of those and you want to give it a go, you could try that. Um, there are a variety of things that you could substitute to help you sit up straight and support your arms. However, <laughs> the Lap App is a really handy tool designed specifically for this. So with that in mind, <laughs> let me show you some more. I see here, I gotta find the button. When your lap app comes, it will be cinched down in a flat position. The way it works is this. There's these two handles that you will need to unscrew. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tidy. And they may require some finger strength to loosen them initially. And in fact, if you tighten them down really hard, you do have to use some energy to untighten them. Once you get it loose, the way the mechanism works is this. There's a post and a post, and these two wooden sidebars that the tightening mechanism goes through. What I have found is that the easiest way to control the lap app is to grasp it by that front post get it where you want it, and then reach back and tighten one and then the other. If you're lucky enough to only ever need it in one position, then, <laughs> then you're one and done. The other thing that you might find helpful is to keep the back one pretty tight so that the height doesn't change. But you can slightly loosen the front one so that it moves a little bit. That can be nice when you're sewing. It depends on the task that you're doing with your lap app. There are three other features of the lap app that may not be immediately obvious. One is that there's a pocket and it lays flat and it's kind of invisible on the fabric, but it's not a bad place to slip something flat. There are three posts on the bottom of the lap app to hold bobbins or spools of thread. And there's a magnet that you can use to set needles on or pins, possibly a small pair of scissors. I'm going to share with you the fact that I almost never use these, but I know they're there and if I need them, I'll use them. It's possible that there might be a time when you want to flip the lap app upside down and use the wooden side. I have not found that to be a need myself, but it doesn't mean it couldn't happen. And I almost forgot, each lap app comes with the pattern to make a replacement cover. And I also carry replacement covers. So if you can't decide which fabric you want, you could order it in one fabric and then order a replacement cover. Let me show you how this works. Oh look, I didn't even realize this. There's sandpaper underneath. You can tell I don't take the cover off very much. The inside has a fused piece of something soft, some sort of fusible interfacing. 
What's nice about that being padded is that it's more comfortable when you set your hands on it. And I suppose if you wanted to do some gentle ironing on the top of the surface, you could. I probably wouldn't. I would probably, if I was going to use this to press on, I would get a small wool mat and place it on top. But that's me. Once you look at this closely and think about all the ways you can use it, what might have looked like a luxury tool in the beginning turns into a really useful tool that is a good value for its money. See, I told you you were going to want one. I'm really sorry. I am. But they're a good tool. Um, okay, there's one, one, more, one more quick, very quick thing I want to show you. Wait, I have to... I tell you what, there's been technical issues. My mouse doesn't want to work. These are the four beautiful fabrics that I have for the lap apps right now. They're all from Allison Glass. As fabrics come and go, some of these may change, but I'm always going to have something beautiful on the top of the lap apps that I carry in the shop. So that part's kind of funny. Lorna found this out. Lorna found out that we could have custom covers made. And of course we had to because, <laughs> because you know, color and pattern, they're just too pretty. So for those of you who already have a lap app, and now you don't have to buy a whole new lap app to get that. And even though the lap app comes with the pattern, it comes with the pattern. You can make your own cover if you want. But really, who wants to? <laughs> I don't want to. Um, we've got, we've ordered extra covers in all of these fabrics. So if you would like to have a prettier cover than you have, and you don't want to make it, you can order one. Now, the other thing I should tell you is this. At least today, on J July 21st, 2021, when I am filming this, um, I think we've sold out. But Lorna has got more ordered. So if you've ordered a lap app or a cover and we're out of stock, more are coming. Remain calm and patient because these are all made in the USA and... Um, it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes Joyce is ahead and sometimes she's, you know, doing stuff. Here's one more thing. I wanted to remember this because there's some of you who may work with wood yourselves or you have someone in your life who works with wood and you might have looked at that video to see how it goes together and you're thinking, I bet we could make one and I bet you could. However... <laughs> Let me, let me explain that the plywood top and bottom, that's really nice quarter inch plywood so that it won't warp. That can be very difficult, especially now to lay your hands on. The two by two posts, I think those are pine, but they may be a hardwood. They may be birch or ash. Again, you'd have to buy a giant long piece in order to cut down what you want. But the more important thing, even if you can get all the pieces, it's those screw handles. Those are hard to lay your hands on, or at least Joyce did have some trouble getting those in at one time. So, <laughs> yes, sure. I mean, I looked at that and I thought, Steve could maybe make that. And then I thought, would he rather I just order one than him go to the trouble of making one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee you that's the case. So there's that too. Um, I think I'm going to be a little bit early this week. Again, let me apologize if you've had trouble connecting. This will record and I'll get it up on YouTube. So it'll be there in just a little while for you to watch. Uh, oh, have I tried washing the covers? There was a question. Um, I have not because as you could see, I, I had not peeled it up to look underneath before. It says you can. If I was washing it, I would wash it in cold, carefully, just so it doesn't shrink. Uh, and I would probably hang it to dry because if you put it in the dryer, it might shrink up. They're supposed to be washable. It's just cotton. So, sure. I don't know why you couldn't wash it. Uh, 
Yeah, because there's elastic. Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't wash it. I'm not seeing any other questions. I think I already said I'm mostly going away now. Um, if you have questions, something you'd like me to talk about, please do email me. I have a list. I'm going to consult my list because I have no idea what I'm talking about next week. But if this has brought some other idea up in your mind, please do share it with me. Oh, Lorna says, wait, there might be, there might be one more question. Um, so there's my email address while I'm waiting for Lorna, who is saying, wait. <laughs> Let's see, while I'm waiting for her to tell me what, uh, I'm going to give you this because next Wednesday, I'll be back at two o'clock. I don't know if she can hear me while I'm saying wait. Oh, she sent me a photo. Here we go. Suggestion, oh, this is from Debbie Alexander. Suggestions for the lap, lap board. Oh, please add another magnet because she'd like to put her scissors on it. She says she loves her app board, lap board. Uh, she uses it every time she applicates and for tons of other things. See, I told you. I told you you would like it. And we will tell Joyce that another magnet would be a good idea. But let me tell you something about those magnets that Lorna probably doesn't know either. They can be hard to get and they're kind of expensive. So if she adds another magnet, the price of the lap app would go up. I'm not sure that's, oh, but you know what you could do, Debbie and all of you, you know what you could do. How would you do it? You know, there's the back post on the lap app where the thing is up above. It seems to me that there ought to be a way to put a cord or like tear a strip of fabric and put it down. And if a person had like a circular magnet, like a magnet, a thing with a magnet to put on it, that you could add your own thing for scissors and it might be even better because it would be attached securely to the post toward the back of the lap app. And if you tied it down tight enough, it wouldn't move. I'm just saying that that might be a more immediate fix for those of you who want a strong magnet to put your scissors on. I hope that made sense. I can picture it. Uh, okay, so it's still not quite 30 minutes, but I'm done. I got nothing else. I look forward to answering any questions you have, and I look forward to seeing you next week on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And I do hope that the links are more sorted out next week. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. There's that.